What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about intercropping. There's a lot of different forms of intercropping, and we're going to talk about the different ways that you can intercrop different plants in your garden to get the most benefit. So let's go. All right, so the first type of intercropping is intercropping for pest control. Now, the idea behind this is very simple. All we're doing is we're planting a plant that pests don't like, and we're planting it next to a plant that pests typically will like. So this could be things like peppers. Um, marigolds, for instance, uh, will prevent things like rabbits. Not all the time, but there's been many studies that show that uh, rabbits do not like the smell of marigolds. So there's some, some evidence to prove that. So uh, we can plant marigolds next to peppers if our peppers are getting eaten by rabbits. There's also been a lot of studies uh, done with marigolds in the soil preventing things like root knot nematodes. So your brassicas, things like broccolis, cauliflowers, cabbages, um, kale, and whatnot, those crops uh, are plagued by a small little soil-borne insect known as a root knot nematode. And what they'll do is they'll create these giant galls on, or basically uh, like tumors almost, on your the root system of your brassicas, and it prevents them from uptaking nutrients and growing, and it's a real big problem. Well, if you plant your marigolds within about a one square foot radius of your brassicas, there have been many studies that show a positive correlation with marigolds to your brassicas. So there's you know uh, a reason there for pest control with your brassicas. There's also um, you know if you plant something like dill, for instance, dill is a very fragrant herb. And a lot of insects will hone in on things like cucumbers. The cucumber beetle will hone in on a cucumber. The Colorado potato beetle will hone in on its host plant, the potato. You might have tomato hornworm, which hones in on tomato plants, right? There's these host plants that the pests typically kind of prefer. Well, how do they find those host plants? By the scent given off by that plant. Uh, squash vine borers, they're attracted to squash plants. And so the, the pheromones, the scents being given off, can be masked with other plants. And so it doesn't have to be marigolds. It could be something like lavender. It could be something like onions, right? The, the very fragrant, potent smell of onions. It could be dill. It could be oregano. It could be basil. It could be mint, right? There's a ton of different crops that you could intercrop. It, the, you know, the options are limitless when it comes to intercropping for pest control. But the idea is that what we're doing is we are planting a plant that will deter pest next to a plant that is preferred by the pest. And that idea of intercropping is very prevalent in polyculture. Polyculture is the idea of planting many plants closer together uh, in kind of a small area. And that whole idea of polyculture is, is basically ingrained in intercropping. That's one of the pillars of, of polyculture is intercropping. And there's a lot of benefits to that, not only just for a, from a beauty standpoint, but also from a function standpoint. They do provide a function. The second type of intercropping is intercropping for an environmental benefit. So that seems a little bit complicated, but what does that mean? Well, uh, intercropping for an environmental benefit could be intercropping two plants together that provide a microclimate or some type of environmental impact. Prime example would be lettuce and sunflowers. So lettuce does not like the hot sun and sunflowers love the sun. They get nice and big, they get nice and tall and they create shade. And that shade can provide a microclimate, that protection for the lettuce to thrive under. So if you have the sun beating down on the soil and the lettuce is going to seed, well, if you plant lettuce next to a taller crop, it could even be things like pole beans, right? This trellis, as the trellis gets full with pole beans or even um, uh, cucumbers, something like that, that shade that's cast onto the garden can be a benefit to certain crops. Things like cilantro, spinach, radishes, lettuce, those plants can have a benefit. So there's an environmental benefit given to those plants just through the shade being given. Um, an idea that a lot, of, a lot of you probably implement is the idea of planting um, you know, your beans around your corn, right? There's an old style of gardening called Three Sisters Gardening. And uh, Three Sisters Gardening essentially is corn, squash, and beans being planted in a close proximity. Now, we don't use that method in our garden. I'm not saying it doesn't work. Um, I find it to be a bit difficult to manage that style of garden, but there are those that, that have a really good uh, that have really good success with it. And the idea is that you know the, the corn uh, will provide uh, you know the the structural support for things like beans. Um, the corn also kind of protects the soil and keeps the soil cool for the beans and the squash. 
but it also provides, you know, like I said, like trellising. The, the trellising component of it is really important. It allows the beans to climb up something, right? The beans are climbing up to get the sunlight, but the soil is kept cool. And so that's the environmental component behind intercropping. And the Three Sisters Garden is, again, just a, it's a very common example given when talking about intercropping, just because um, much like planting marigolds next to other crops, you know, that's another that's another pillar of polyculture is kind of the, the three sisters method. That's what a lot of people go to because it's probably one of the best ways to kind of showcase how three plants can grow so closely together, but they're all benefiting from each other. All right, now we're going to talk about intercropping for pollination benefits. So we have just next to us our current plants and those current plants are planted in close proximity. And a lot of people have documented the benefits of having multiple plants of the same species next to each other. Well, what happens is that there's actually an intercropping going on there because we don't have just one type of current. We have multiple types of currents. And you can do this also with completely unlike species. You could plant lavender next to the, the currents and you're gonna attract pollinators into your, your current patch. Or if you have fruit trees, right, your peaches, your apples, your pears, you could attract pollinators to them, uh, to those trees through the use of things like lavender, marigolds, nasturtiums, uh, borage, right? Plants that bring in the pollinators can help to pollinate your fruit trees, right? So there's an intercropping for pollination, but also, like I touched on, you can have your, your currants, right? They're not, they're not uh, different plants. They're different species of current. So we have red currants, white currants, we have pink champagne currants, we have black currants, and having all those currants next to each other provides cross-pollination between current plants, which gives us better fruit set, right? So there's, there's an intercropping component there as well. They're not all red currants, they're not all white currants, they're different species of currants. And you see this as well with things like cherry trees, peach trees, apple trees, um, even blueberries. There's a huge benefit to having multiple plants. And that's why when you plant out an orchard, they will typically say, you know, plant this one with a pear, not a pear like a fruit, like a pear is in two, right? Plant this out with a partner so that it can cross pollinate and you have better fruit set. So that is the third type of, of intercropping. And that's, a very, that's another very common one. And there's a lot of benefits to doing that one as well. Now they all take different forms, right? They all are different in a, you know, in a, uh, it, they're, they're different in their application, but it's all still intercropping, which is what makes it really cool. Now I wanna talk about the fourth type of intercropping, and it's one that a lot of people don't talk enough about. All right, the fourth type of intercropping, like I said, is one that I don't see a lot of people talking very much about, even though it is pretty well documented, and that's intercropping for what's known as a decoy plant. So this kind of could be seen as pest control, but in my mind, it's a little bit different because with pest control, you are, essentially planting a plant that will deter a pest. Well, what if you have a plant that brings in a pest into your garden or attracts it to that plant, but kind of keeps it occupied or distracted from your other plants, right? This is very, very common. And a lot of people will plant things like mustard crops because you'll have things like your cabbage moths swoop in and attack your, your mustard crops. Um, or it could be aphids on things like, like flowering kale. Very, very common attractant for aphids. And what happens is that the aphids hone in on those crops and not on your other crops. And so you have pest problems in the garden, but not on the crops that you want to harvest. And so you're almost basically, you're, you're sacrificing these crops as decoy plants. And you're saying, I'm planting these plants with the sole purpose of bringing pests into the garden so that, uh, or not really bringing pests into the garden more or less, but you're, you're, if there are pests in the garden, they're going to be attracted to these plants. I'm going to let these plants be sacrificed so that I can, for the betterment of the rest of my garden, I can have a pest-free garden. And that's a very, very common form of intercropping. Now we have seen this with great success, uh, especially, um, especially where you have large, very, very large farms. Now this is kind of where it gets a little bit away from the idea of polyculture, because most people would say large farms can never be considered polyculture. However, um, we were at a UPIC patch and at the UPIC patch, in between each row of blueberries, there was a row of, um, I don't exactly know, the, the farmer that was doing it basically said that it was for 
bird control because birds would eat all the blueberries, but they prefer these teeny tiny little red berries. I don't know what they were called, but he had basically hedgerows of them in between, and he was growing on probably 40 acres. And he was a commercial blueberry grower, but he grew these little red berries and they fruited around the same time that the blueberries did. But he planted them with the exact purpose of saying, these crops, I'm not even harvesting from these crops, but it's protecting my blueberry crops, which we're harvesting from. And that idea of sacrificing this one plant for the sole benefit of getting the other plant to harvest is a great intercropping method. It can work on a small scale or a large scale, and it's very, very effective. So that's what I don't see a lot of people talking a lot about, and maybe that's because they're bundling it into the pest control uh, method, but I don't see, I, I don't see how they can't, they're, they're quite a bit different in their application. So one completely deters them, the other one kind of attracts them and keeps them occupied. So now let's talk about the fifth and final form of intercropping, and uh, I think it's one you guys are really gonna love. All right, in the fifth and final form of intercropping, and this one is for all the millennials out there, it's what I call a YOLO intercropping. You only live once, right? So uh, intercropping, I find to be a very beneficial thing in the garden. But you get a lot of people in a certain camp that are, they're what I call intercropping purists. And there's nothing wrong with being an intercropping purist if you are one, but I find that sometimes it can kind of rob the joy from the garden a little bit. And a YOLO intercropping is basically saying, well, hey, you only live once, so I'm gonna throw whatever I want next to whatever I want. And sometimes they don't coexist all that well. Sometimes they do trample each other, but you know what? You had fun doing it, right? If you wanted to do it, I've always said, your garden is your canvas. And if you're the painter, you can paint your canvas however you want. There's nobody that can tell you what you can plant next to each other because at the end of the day, it's your garden, it's your art, this is your creation. You know, make it what you want, right? And so um, the fifth one is one that I kind of threw in here just because I see so way too often. People shouting down people on online forums saying, well, you, you can't plant, you can't plant cucumbers next to, next to your zucchini. The, the, the big zucchini leaves are gonna shade out all your cucumbers and they're both in the cucurbita family. You need to, you need to space them out. And I said, well, let the guy do what he wants to do. It's, you only live once. Why live life miserably? And so at the end of the day, you know, if you're someone that's trying to learn and you don't know, well, okay, that's one thing. Okay, you can learn and say, okay, maybe I shouldn't plant cucumbers next to my zucchinis. But what the heck if I want to? What's it gonna hurt you, right? So <clears throat> at the end of the day, that's kind of the final form of intercropping because uh, I like to live life and have, and have fun doing it. I like to live life to the fullest. And I do follow, you know, some, some kind of loose rules to, to gardening for best success because obviously I want you guys to, I know a lot of people watch my channel and uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people watch my channel and they, they kind of carbon copy what I'm doing, whether it's the spacing or what I'm planting next to what and stuff like, I, I understand that I'm very influential in how I garden and I get that. Um, so I don't do a whole lot of YOLO intercroppings, but you know what? You can, and that's what's, what's one of the nice things about being you and not me. People always ask me, Luke, what's one thing you love? I get to talk to millions of gardeners every single year. I love doing it. I have the time of my life doing it. I get to impact people's lives. What's one of the worst things? Uh, realizing that every little word that I say will, yeah, uh, absolutely will be used against me. <laughs> they will uh, take every word as the, uh, you know, as the truth. And so, um, you know, I, I try to, I try to not stray too far away from that because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to set people up for failure. So. Um, I thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up there. We have so much more gardening content coming out and these videos get spread around when you like them, when you interact with them. So the more thumbs up this video gets, the better. Uh, the more comments this video gets, the better. So comment down below something that you loved about this episode, something that you want me to do a future video on. Um, it could be a video that, or it could be something in this video that, uh, that you agreed with, disagreed with, I don't really care. Any type of interaction is great. So uh, please interact and also subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're doing videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So three videos a week. And uh, that means lots of gardening content coming out. So uh, the gardening season is just getting started. So I don't want you guys to miss out on anything. So with that, hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you all on the next episode. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, bye.